Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to tell you if making monthly chapbooks is worth it. This is the final question kind of out of the um, bunch of little questions I got from KO on that one video, which I don't even remember which video it was anymore. Here's the thing. I have been putting out monthly chapbooks now for almost two years straight. If it wasn't for my printer dying out in the desert, um, it would have been since uh, the end of 2016 because I was doing monthly chapbooks then too. Um, and then my printer died and I didn't know what to do. And then I was out in the desert and like that fucking sucked. So um, there was about a two year break there um but i was doing monthly chapbooks there too for six months actually no that's not true it went longer than that because i did some short story collection ones as well so yeah so seven months and then i took about two years off and now i've been doing this again for almost two years now the reason why I'm able to do this is because I am a prolific writer. So if you do not have tons of shit laying around, I would not recommend do, doing monthly chapbooks. Um, if you can write quickly and get that kind of shit out, I would say knock yourself out. But I would say write six months worth of shit before you even start. And if you have six months worth of shit, then start putting them out. Because honestly, there are going to be times where you hit a fucking wall and you need time to recharge and like take a step back. Like I write tons of poetry and I still write a fair amount of short stories, but there have been a couple months here and there where I've only written like five poems in the whole month. And so if I was having to do this shit, like, every fucking, like, month, like, have to write new shit, there might be some months where I fuck up and miss a month. But because, and then, too, because all of my shit is, like, themed, like, this is poems written in one night, this is poems about hating going to Walmart, um, poems about Los Angeles, poems about shit, um... You know, because I theme my stuff, it's easier for me. Because, like, in fact, the, uh, I'm like this month, I'm doing um, a chapbook called MacArthur Park, which um, is kind of like the sequel to my Los Angeles one. My Los Angeles book is probably my best selling chapbook of the last six months. And um, because I had more poems that are like that I'm like fuck I'm gonna put another one out um, but then again the one I'm doing in January which name I won't say it's all poems that I wrote like two and a half years ago um, that all revolve around a certain theme you know but that's the whole thing I have the ability to do this because I'm that prolific and you're like well how are you that prolific how, how does that even happen a lot of this is because Back in the golden days of Kindle, the Kindle Gold Rush, I was writing serials. Like, I cut my teeth on writing serials. But honestly, before that, I, I wrote songs all the fucking time. I would write anywhere from like two to eight songs a day, lyrics and music for all different kinds of projects. Like, if you watch the video on my pen names, me starting a fucking publishing house and doing it like that. I did that with music. I would write songs that were all kind of different genres, but along the same vein. And I would put bands together for each of those types of songs. So I would have enough bands to put shows together to charge people to come in and hear all these bands play. I would play a different instrument in each band. Drums in one band, sing in one band, guitar in another band, bass in another band. Do all this shit. And then sell fucking demo tapes to these people, sell fucking comp albums of all the bands together, one song each, 
And that's how I got through fucking high school and college. I was doing that shit. So it's just getting in the habit of writing all the fucking time, you know? And when I was doing the serials, like I was writing anywhere from 10 to 20,000 words at a time per week to be put out the next week. You know, it was like, fuck, dude. It was like, bam, bam, bam. You got to fucking go. Keep going. Keep going. And I get off on that. I get off on deadlines. I fucking lose my shit over it. I fucking love it. It like pushes me. And then whenever I start hitting those deadlines easily, I'm like, well, I got to up my game now. I got to start writing 30,000 words a week for each serial or else I'm not fucking doing enough. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's, that's me. That's how I fucking work. Not everybody's like that. Not even a fraction of people are like that. But if you started now and wrote every day for the next three to six months, you will always have stuff to put out. Okay. And now we go to the thing, like, why the fuck would you do this? Why would you do it? There is a theory about oversaturating a market, okay? And this theory is sound. If you put out too much stuff, your audience will eventually get tired of it if it's constantly the same kind of shit. That's why I fucking change my shit up, but not too much. Because if you remember me ever talking about serials and talking about Blackstar... Black Star was a hit. Like I was paying all my bills and rent and I was living in the valley. I was living in LA. Okay? I was paying all my fucking bills off of Black Star Canyon for a good 3 years. People like my readers fucking loved Black Star. They couldn't get enough of it, okay? So when I started doing other serials, when I was doing the Brain Hunter um, or the Zombie Zero series, when that was serialized, when I was doing the Gavel, when I was doing Hitman Black, when I was doing Shallow Jallow, and um, even Black Market Blood Drive, when I first started that, those weren't Black Star. So my audience did not dig that as much, and those did not sell as well. And I started going crazy because I knew from the second I started writing Black Star that it was going to end. Like I had the ending before I had anything else for Black Star. So knowing that Black Star was going to end and my fucking gravy train was eventually going to fucking die, I started panicking. Because the people who liked Black Star were not like some of them would like the Zombie Zero stuff. Some of them liked the um, Shallow Jallow stuff. But it wasn't like all my readers liked everything. It, it, it like it freaked me out. I didn't understand what the fuck was happening. Now, when I started doing poetry, it became easier because the subject of these poems, no matter if it's about Walmart, if it's about Los Angeles, if it's about writing in one night, if it's about suicide, whatever it's about, the central focus is me. So the audience that I gather, as long as I remain interesting to people, people will continue to read it. The other thing that's cool about theming your books is that if I have a theme that people are interested in, they're going to come back. Okay? I'm not oversaturating the market. Because if I wrote, honestly, <clears throat> if I spent two years writing poems about fucking Walmart, that would have only lasted two months. It would not continue. People would go, oh, fuck, he's played that fucking song before. I've heard that. So doing little things that are a little bit different every time it makes people come back and the whole idea when you're doing a serial or you're doing anything that is a constant thing 
like a reoccurring thing, what you're trying to do from a marketing standpoint is to build habits. Like you want people to want to know what happens next. You want people to continue that journey. Okay. So just like with like me fucking loving Batman and like growing up reading fucking Batman comics and Spider-Man comics, I wanted every fucking issue every two weeks because I couldn't fucking get enough of it. And if I was going to miss an issue, I would lose my fucking mind. And then being, being a collector on the other part, when it's like part two of three and I missed it, it was like, God, no, it was like, how dare this fucking thing happen? Okay. So you, you build the habit, but, but the most important thing about building a habit is not letting your audience down. If your audience is going to take the time to bring you into their life every month, you have to make sure you're giving them something that fucking good every month. You know what I'm saying? And the way to do that is to constantly give them something new, but something that's the same. Like, if I could have made Black Star an ongoing thing, I never would have had to do another thing the rest of my life. I could have just done Black Star for fucking ever. But I knew it had an end, and I knew it was coming, and it fucked me up, dude. So if you're if you're going to be writing novels or a, a series book or serials, never have an end in mind because it will it like, especially if it takes off, never have an end. Like I completely fucked up on that. But at the same time, I went into it going, I'm not going to string this out. This has an end. This is it's going to happen. And everyone's just going to fucking deal with it. And they did. And you know what happened? The audience was pissed off at me for ending the thing that they loved. It goes back to Sherlock Holmes. Author Conan Doyle did not want to write Sherlock Holmes anymore. So he fucking killed Sherlock Holmes. And people fucking lost their shit. They were so fucking pissed. And they took it out on him. He tried to do other shit. Nobody fucking cared. So then he was like, huh, well, I mean, I guess I could write some, you know, other stories from like before he died, like stuff that we never got to. I could, I could do that. That's fine. And so he did that. And then finally it was like, I just got to fucking bring him back or else I'm not going to be able to eat this week. Okay. And that's what happened with Blackstar. Completely screwed the pooch on it. I took the thing I did that was fucking making my life livable and I killed it when I had already gotten the readers trusting me and having this become a habit for them. So anyway, um, the habit forming nature of writing the monthly chapbooks is really fucking helpful. Another thing I think that makes this helpful is the scarcity and the rarity of me doing only a certain run of each one. So like, like there's 50 of these, there's 50 of these, there's like 27 of those, there's 125 of those. Um, some of them, the runs were only like seven um, because... I was just the number that was chosen. But because of that, because there's this like whole idea of like people not wanting to miss out on what the fuck's going on, especially if they're collecting, because this is the thing that's crazy that like blows my mind a little bit just as an artist and like just makes me feel really good. There are people who genuinely collect my chapbooks. They want to have a full set. They collect them. And that fucking, like, it fills me with so much fucking love that people fucking like my shit that much. That they want to fucking collect my shit. It, it blows my mind. Like, so for all of you who do that and let me know that you do that, 
thank you, I love you, you guys are the best. And unlike Blackstar, until I'm fucking dead, I'm going to keep writing these. Because, like, I will not let you down. I learned that lesson. Okay? So, again, you have to be prolific. You can't let your audience down. You have to build habits. And in order to make all of this work, you always have to keep changing it up without taking your eye off the prize. So, which, like, if you are the main thing that holds all this together, you need to keep that going. So... If you want to write children's books, come up with one character or a set of characters, one world, the whole fucking thing, and then every other story idea that you could possibly imagine, bring into that world and give it to that character and run with it like that. That's how you do it. And again, you will start off selling a very small amount. Like maybe friends and family will get it. And you might sell like one or two to people who hopefully will become fans. Okay. But it's not going to happen overnight. Again, I've been doing this for years. It takes a bit of time. But if you give it that time and you have faith in yourself, you could totally do this. If you're prolific, if you can do it. Okay. So I hope that fucking makes some sense. Again. Go over to Etsy, buy my books, start your collection now, god damn it. And if you're missing one or two, you better start getting them before they're gone. I'm going to be doing another inventory video here soon because I noticed my fucking numbers were not changing on Etsy again. So I got to fucking go through and fix all this shit up again. So take a look at that. Um, pick up my stuff. Type hard, everybody. You can do this. You can fucking do this. All right? And I will talk to you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.